Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. The first question is, how do we best prepare to meet Christ? Now, underneath it says, what attributes will he look for us to have mastered? It's, uh, it's a good question, but it's funny how the spirit rolls. Uh, we've been going over this week by week, no matter what question comes up. I want to show you a few things really quick. Go to uh, 1 John, the fourth chapter. 1 John, chapter 4. Start at uh, 17. All right. Remember, the question says, how do we best prepare on how to meet Christ? And what attributes will he leave for us? No, no, no. Will he look for us to have mastered? All right. Read that. The book of 1 John. Chapter 4 and verse 17. Come on. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. In the day of judgment. That's going into the day to meet who? Okay, good job. Read it again from the top. Verse 17. Herein is our love made perfect, mm -hmm. that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Come on. Because as he is, so are we in this world. Read. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. It says perfect love casteth out fear. Perfect love casteth out fear. Who can explain that scripturally and spiritually for us? Let me see you brothers who study. So the Bible says there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Let me hear you, brother Yeshaya. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. So uh, we know that love is keeping God's commandments. Yes. So being perfect in love would be you you being perfect in keeping the commandments. Yes. So um, and we also know that uh, the Most High didn't create the spirit of fear. So with you keeping the commandments, you won't have no fear in that day. Yeah, that's good. I like that. All right. So was that Second Timothy one and seven? God has not given up the spirit of fear. All right. Verse eighteen. First John chapter four, verse 18. Come on. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. Perfect love casteth out fear. All right. Um, I like this scripture, so we're just going to go to it real quick. Come right back. Wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha. <clears throat> uh, chapter seven and verse 30. Because it say perfect love casteth out fear. Now, remember, love is the keeping of what? So now think with me. Think with me a little bit. So keeping the commandments, that's one level. What would be the next level of keeping God's commandments? What would that word be? Because it said perfect love. It ain't just say normal love. It said perfect love. Is that confusing? A little bit. It's meant to be confusing. I'm just playing with you. Think about it, all right? Love is one step. Now think about if you're a master at keeping God's commandments, what will you have? Huh? Wisdom. That's it right there. Wisdom. 
Okay, perfect love is that wisdom. Okay, all right, read this. Actually, start at uh, 25. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 25. Mm -hmm. For she is the breath of the power of God and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Hey, I tell, I go over uh, this with leadership all the time. There's nothing better than a pure influence. You know why? Think about it. A lot of times, if it comes from, let's play this. Y'all ever play that game in elementary where you say something in somebody's ear and then it goes all the way around the room, but when it gets over there, something different? Read that again. For she is the breath of the power of God uh -huh. and a pure influence. This means it's untainted. All right, not diluted, because that's what happens a lot of times. You understand? If it comes from the source, eventually what happens in the nation of Israel? We get to the point where we're serving idols. We get to the point where we're doing everything outside of what God told us to do in the first place. Okay, read it again. For she is the breath of the power of God. Come on. And a pure influence. And a pure influence. When it says she, what is that talking about? Wisdom. Read on. And a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into, into her. You see that? No defiled thing could fall into something that's pure. So that's what we ought to be striving for and yearning for. We want to be, we want to have that perfect love, okay? We want to be uh, uh, able to apply God's commandments with wisdom, okay? Uh, give me that in Sirach 1 and 19 real quick. Wisdom wisdom and the only way to obtain that wisdom and this is answering the question remember the question is how do we best prepare to meet christ okay it says what attributes will he look for us to have mastered mastered read this sirach chapter 1 and verse 19 good wisdom reigneth down skill it and says wisdom reigneth down skill someone who's skillful when it comes to the greats like uh, Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant, the reason why they are known as being the greats is because when it comes to their game, they are very skillful. Whether it be on defense, whether it be in the post, they have an all-around game, and that's why they were able to do it for so long and be effective for so long because once they're, uh, what's it called? You're, when you pass that, your prime. Once they pass their prime, they were still able to, what, dominate because they had skill. The question was, what attribute will he look for us to have mastered? The commandments of God. That's what he wants us to have mastered. Read this again. Verse 19. Come on. Wisdom reigneth down skill uh -huh. and knowledge uh -huh. of understanding and exalted them to honor that hold her fast. You see, you'll be exalted to honor if you do what? Hold these commandments close to you and master them by becoming skillful. The only way to become skillful is to do what? Rehearse the righteous acts or to practice, okay? Now, from there, go back to Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, and I want you to read verse 28 on down. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 28. Come on. For God loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. You see, he's telling you right there. He loveth none else but those who dwelleth with wisdom. To dwell means to what? To abide by every day, even when nobody's looking. The secret place of the Most High, like it says in Psalms, okay? Remember that. That's how we're going to get delivered. It says Psalms 91 and 1, those who abide in the secret place. The secret place is this Bible, okay? Read on. Verse 29, mm -hmm. for she is more beautiful than the sun Read. and above all the order of stars Come on. being compared with the light. She is found before it Read. for after this cometh night, but vice shall not prevail against wisdom. Meaning what? Our hangups, anything that we deal with cannot battle against God's wisdom. You understand? That's what a vice is. Now, we're going to bring all that and put it in verse 18. First John, chapter 4, verse 18. Watch this. First John, chapter 4, and verse 18. Come on. There is no fear in love, 
but perfect love casteth out fear. You see, that wisdom casteth out that vice. You understand? If you have fear, that means you doubt God. That's going into that vice or that hang up or whatever you may have. It's not just talking about fear in general. All right. Y'all get give me that in, uh, wisdom of Solomon about fear so y'all can understand what I'm saying. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17 and verse 12. OK, because fear could mean you're dealing with a lot of different vices. All right. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, verse 12. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17 and verse 12. Come on. For fear is nothing else but a betraying of the succors which reason offereth. Your succor is Jesus Christ. That's your succor. So if you have fear in any form of fashion, meaning what? If you go against the commandment in any form of fashion, that's called fear. Because you are betraying Jesus Christ. Everybody understand that? Okay, very good. Let's go back to 1 John 4 and 18. 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. The question is, how do we best prepare to meet Christ? What attributes will ye look for us to have mastered? Okay, read on. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 18. Come on. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. Perfect love, that's applying God's commandments at a high level, which is called what? Wisdom, come on. Because fear have torment. Mm -hmm. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. It just say, he that betrays Christ, he that breaks God's commandments, you're not going to be, be made perfect in love. Read. We love him because he first loved us. Come on. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. Mm -hmm. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen. Whom he what? Whom he had seen. Come on. How can he love God whom he hath not seen? So the question was, how do we best prepare to meet Christ? <laughs> well, look around, brothers and sisters. That's how you prepare to meet Christ. This right here. Give me that in Ephesians chapter 4 real quick. Uh, start at verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 11. And he gave some apostles mm -hmm. and some prophets mm -hmm. and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. And we went over this last week. That's going into the hierarchy in regards to leadership that the Most High set up. Read. Verse 12. Come on. For the perfecting of the saints. For the what? Perfecting of the saints. Remember it said perfect love in 1 John 4 and 18. For the what? For the perfecting of the saints. Come on. For the work of the ministry. Mm -hmm. For the edifying of the body of Christ. The what? For the edifying of the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Who's the body of Christ? Oh, they don't know. Hmm, let me ask again. Who's the body of Christ? Yeah, us. So now let's go back to 1 John 4 and 20. 1 John 4 and 20. What's the question? How do we best prepare to meet Christ? What attributes will he look for us to have mastered? Love thy brother, love thy neighbor as thyself. Read it. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20. Come on. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother, he is a liar. So a lot of people say, man, I can't wait till the kingdom come. <laughs> We say that, oh, man, I can't wait till Babylon is destroyed. But you got to quarrel with your brother. You got to quarrel with your sister, with your mother, some uh, father, some people's mother's father's in the truth. Uh, you at odds with your children or whatever it may be. You have something wrong within the body of Christ. But you say you are ready to meet Christ. The Bible's calling you a what? A liar, a liar. And guess what? What does Revelations 21 and 8 say about liars? They're going to have a part in the lake of fire. You could play it up in here. <laughs> you understand? But you can't play with God. Okay? Give me uh, 2 Ezra chapter 1, verse 37. Watch this. Watch this. 2 Ezra 1 and 37. This is why I was like, yeah, I want to answer this question. It's a good question. 
Second Ezra, chapter one and verse thirty-seven. Watch this, y'all. I take to witness. Tell to you what. Start at verse. Start at verse thirty-five. Second Ezra, chapter one and verse thirty-five. Mm -hmm. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which not having heard of me yet shall believe me. All right. So in this context. Who can explain that in this context? Who's this talk? Who is that directed to? Somebody explain that for us. Um, Simon. Shalom, leadership. Shalom. All right. So, uh, was he? Uh, he was talking to uh, our ancestors. Yeah, I'll make it easier. Mark chapter eight verse eleven. Watch this. Mark chapter eight verse eleven. Y'all, y'all right? Y'all right? Get you a preset. Make sure to write this down. Mark chapter 8 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. And the Pharisees came forth and began to question with him, seeking of him a sign a from what? a sign, a what? A sign uh -huh. from heaven, tempting him. Doing what? Tempting him. That's how our forefathers used to roll because we had wicked leaders set up. Okay, that we would tempt Christ. We would tempt the Most High. So he's saying, because of that, since y'all want to do that, Hey, the people I use, they ain't gonna seek a sign. They're just gonna they're just gonna do it. Okay. Now go back. Uh second Ezra 135. Once you read down. Show you something. The book of Second Ezra, chapter one and verse thirty five. Come on. Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which not having heard of me yet shall believe me. And that's us, like Josh here Nathaniel said. That's us present day. To whom I have showed no signs, mm -hmm. yet they shall do that I have commanded them. We shall do what he told us to do. Read. They have seen no prophets, mm -hmm. yet they shall call their sins to remembrance. And this is going, it's going to tie into another question we got here about how do we know the prophets existed? All right. They said they have seen no prophets. Read. Yet they shall call their sins to remembrance. Come on. And acknowledge them. And acknowledge them. Watch this. I take to witness the grace of the people to come. Uh-huh. Whose little ones rejoice in gladness. Watch this. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes. Remember what First John 4 and 20 said. Let's read that to refresh everybody's memory. Then I want you to come right back to verse 37. Watch this. First John chapter 4 and verse 20. Come on. If a man say, I love God and hated his brother, uh -huh. he is a liar. He is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he had seen. Whom he have what? Whom he had seen. Whom he have seen. Read. How can he love God whom he had not seen? Now, watch this. Read verse 37. Second Ezra chapter one and verse 37. Come on. I take to witness the grace of the people to come whose little ones rejoice in gladness. Come on. And through, though, excuse me, and though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, yet in spirit they believe the thing that I say. And what is one of the things that the Father said? Othenio. To love your brothers. Yeah, Leviticus 19 and 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Okay. Now, let's see what he says in the next verse. Read on. Verse 38. Come on. And now, brother, behold what glory, and see the people that cometh from the east, uh -huh. unto whom I will give for leaders. Oh, hold on. Wait a second. He's saying in the last days, which is what? We already identified that we the people that didn't seek a sign, right? Uh-oh, they forgot. They lost the thought. Who is the people who wouldn't seek a sign? Who is it? It's us, right? All right, so let's see what he says in verses 38 and 39. Watch this. First, second Ezra chapter 1, verse 38. Come on. And now, brother, behold what glory, and see the people that cometh from the east, unto whom I will give for leaders. For what? For leaders. What, what do leaders do, <laughs> brothers and sisters? They lead. Who? The people. And the people should do what? Ah, oh, okay. Okay, read it again. Read it again. Verse 39. They's like, damn, he got us again. How does this keep happening? All right, read it again. 
unto whom I will give for leaders. Come on. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Osias, Amos, and Micaiah, Joel, Abidas, and Jonas, uh -huh. Nahum, and Ab Abekuk, uh, Zophanes, Agagias, Zachary, and Malachi, which is also an angel of the Lord, which is what? A messenger of God, meaning what? In the last days, he would send his prophets back to lead those people who did not seek a sign. So if you want to know how do we best prepare to meet Christ, what attributes he will look for for us to have mastered, love your neighbor as yourself, and follow the leadership that God placed over you. Hope that answers your question. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.